pathophysiology of acquired immunodeficiency syndrome. The hallmark of the disease is a profound immune deficiency due to quantitative and qualitative deficiency of CD4 helper cell. So the hallmark of the AIDS is profound immune deficiency, qualitative and quantitative deficiency of CD4 cell. Virus on entry in the body is taken up by the dendritic cell and also by the monocytes and macrophages which trap the antigen for the B and T cells to initiate the immune response and takes it to the lymphoid tissues to be removed by the CD4 cell. So virus enters the dendritic cell in the blood and also the monocytes and macrophages. They take the antigen to the lymphoid tissue for the removal by the B and T cells. So how dendritic cells trap the HIV virus? C type of lactin receptors on the dendritic cells bind to the HIV GP120 protein that facilitates the union or binding of the CD4 cell with the virus. The viral replication occurs in the dendritic cells in the lymph node. So they become reservoir of the virus in the lymph node. So C type of lactin receptors on the dendritic cell binds to the protein GP120 and the HIV virus and that facilitates the union of the binding of the virus with the CD4 cell and virus replicates in dendritic cells. So they are the reservoirs. The virus is cytotoxic to the CD4 cell causing loss of cell mediated immunity. How does the virus attach to the CD4 cell and enters the host cell? The virus envelop protein GP120 that binds to the receptors on the CD4 cell and fuses with it with the GP41 protein and penetrates into the cell and coil and viral DNA. Enzymes and protein are released into the host cell cytoplasm. So this is the HIV virus and this is the GP120 protein which binds to the CD4 cell and then the second protein GP41 on the HIV virus fuses with the CD4 cell and then there occurs penetration into the cell and coiling of the virus. See this I showed it in purple penetration and coiling and then the viral RNA enzymes and and protein are released into the cytoplasm of the CD4 cell. So GP120 binds to the CD4 cell and then this fuses with the help of GP41 protein with the CD4 cell and then penetrates and coils into the CD4 cell. And viral RNA enzyme and protein are released into the host cell. The CD4 cells have co-receptor for the entry of this virus into the cell. The two major co-receptors are 5CCR and CXCR4 receptors. So this is the CD4 cell. It has two receptors 5CCR and CXCR4 receptor here that combines with the virus. HIV envelope protein interacts with the CD4 and chemokines in receptor. Cytokines cause increased cellular activation and HIV replication. Virus is cytotoxic to the CD4 cell. The virus binds to the CD4 cell receptor here with the help of GP120 protein and then fuses with it with the help of GP141 protein and then coils into, penetrates into the CD4 cell where the viral genome proteins and enzymes are released into cytoplasm of the CD4 cell. So what happens in the cytoplasm of the CD4 cell. The viral reverse transcriptase then act on the genomic RNA and convert into double-stranded DNA which then along with the integrase enters into the nucleus of the CD4 cell through the nucleopore and this DNA is integrated into the DNA of the CD4 cell and then mRNA comes out for the protein synthesis and viral genome comes out and leaves the cell after budding. So I repeat here in the host cell cytoplasm viral DNA reverse transcriptase exon viral DNA converts into double stranded DNA. This is reverse transcription. The reverse transcriptase first forms single stranded DNA and then it forms double stranded DNA as I shown here and then it enters through the nucleopores along with integrase into the nucleus and integrates with the CD4 cell DNA with the help of the enzyme integrase 
which also enters the nucleus. This provirus DNA remains transcriptionally inactive or latent for some time until it activates to replicate the HIV cycle. So how it releases the mature virion? The other enzyme, protease, cleaves the gap pole from the provirus and converts it into mature virion. See here, this one, protease cleaves the gap pole to yield the mature, from provirus to yield mature virion. So what does gag do? Gag encodes the protein that forms the core of the virus. So I repeat, viral particle is formed by the assembly of HIV protein, enzyme and genomic RNA at the plasma membrane of the cell. And the enzyme protease cleaves the gawk pole precursor to yield mature virus. A major site for establishment and propagation of HIV infection is a lymphatic system, especially gut-associated lymphoid tissue, G-A-L-T. The acute phase that is starts after the entry of the virus is flu-like syndrome lasts from about two weeks to two or three months and then there is a latent period here's the acute phase and then a, a latent period of about two to ten years and then the virus increases and there are opportunistic infection and then this is the acute stage which lasts from two weeks to two to three months and then the virus decreases in number latent period is about two to ten years then the infections increase due to opportunistic organism leading to the death. In this period, the HIV virus is increased and CD4 cells are markedly decreased. After the viral entry, there is a window period of 10 days. Signs symptoms of acute flu resembling the features of infectious mononucleosis. Clinical features starts appearing on day 11 and 95% of the patients have features in 6 weeks. So here it's at day 11, the clinical feature starts appearing and reaching a peak and then antigen P24 appear on day 16 and reaches a peak simultaneously with the clinical features and then both of them start falling and immunoglobulin first IgM starts appearing then it falls and then immunoglobulin G IgG starts and it maintains a steady state in about three months. So P26 antigen appears on day 16 and the 95% of the patients develop P24 within one to six weeks. So IgM antibodies starts appearing on day 22 and reaches a peak and then it starts falling and then as I mentioned earlier then IgG starts going up and maintains a peak in three months. So 95% of the patients have antibody in one month and 99% in three months. So I repeat the window period is of 10 days. Clinical features appear on day 11 and 95% have clinical features in six weeks. Clinical features appearing on day 11 and the P24 antigen appearing on day 16 and then IgM antibody starts on day 22. This is IgM starting to appear on day 22 reaches a peak in a few days in a time then it starts falling and IgG goes up and maintains a steady state in three months. This is IgG antibody maintaining the peak of the clinical features, the peak of the antigen P24. Now role of cytokines in HIV infection. Cytokines play a major role in the regulation of HIV expression in vitro. TNF alpha causes activation of HIV expression. Expression, whereas interleukin 6 and interferon gamma regulate HIV expression in post transcriptional mechanism. Interleukin 1 beta induces HIV infection at transcription level. There is impaired expression of interleukin 2 receptors, defective interleukin 2 production reduces expression of interleukin 7 receptors and decreases TNF gamma production in response to antigen. So amongst the cytokines, TNF-alpha causes HIV expression, interleukin-6 and interferon gamma regulate HIV expression in post-transcriptional mechanism and interleukin-1-beta also induces the infection at transcription level, whereas impaired expression of interleukin-2 decreases its production 